very, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough wall. It's one of the toughest ones I've worked on because they did a, it's not that stucco is tough, it's just that they did a trowel effect, so you got all these textures that make it more difficult to get a real clean, fine line. But even with that, we'll still be able to do that. It just takes longer. You know, I've worked on a lot of different type of surfaces. This one's probably one of the roughest, toughest ones. So now you said you, you started a, a number of years ago working in this type of uh, project. How did you start painting murals? Um, sign art. I started working on signs, painting signs when I was in San Jose. And then from there, I started going to bigger projects. And then I worked with a bunch of different people that I learned a lot of tricks and techniques with. And then I started getting involved with the wall dogs. And then they started flying me to different cities. I went to Chicago, painted some murals south of Chicago. I got three in the state of Illinois. I got one in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And then I've got some here in the valley, some in San Francisco. So, that's what we do. And we'll talk about some of those uh, in, in the valley in a second. Uh, you mentioned some people that, that sort of were influential uh, in, in your early career. Who were those people? And, and would you care to talk about them a little bit and how they inspired you? Well, I used to be a window washer and a janitor, and I needed some business cards made, and one of the guys that uh, I remember a lot because he gave me my first set of brushes was a guy named Frosty. He was a creative artist in San Jose, and I seen him painting, and I liked the studio and the way his art was set up was, and I was uh, tired of cleaning toilets and washing windows and stuff, so I seen that that's what I would rather be doing than what I was doing. So I bugged him and bugged him, so finally he gave me my first set of brushes. And then I started doing Christmas paintings. And then that's when it started. And then later on, uh, I got a, a brief stint to go to uh, LA Trade Tech in Los Angeles, where they taught sign painting. Uh, and then that's where it just kept going and going. And then I met the different sign artists. With a lot of now talk about the challenge in, in translating uh, something like this. You have an original piece of art by Ernesto Palomino, who we're also going to be talking to in a series of programs, and and then translating it, his work, to this massive scale on this on this building. How, how do you go about that? How do you even think about where, where to start on something like that? Well, what do, this is my second one that I've done for Ernie, and uh, on this one, what we did is scaled out the drawings. So Ernie made a great big drawing. The big original one is inside the building. And that was to scale up the size of the wall. 0.7 KFSR. We're actually out in downtown Selma today as uh, he's working on a uh, mural on uh, the side of a wall uh, just off 2nd and High Streets in Selma. You can uh, come by and, and see the work in progress. And uh, it's actually very exciting to see something like this come together. Um, you know, you, your work is seen throughout the valley. Um, tell us about some of your favorites. <coughs> I'd say one of my favorites was walking through it because there wasn't a sign. Okay, here I am uh, at uh, in Selma. I'm working on the mules again, and uh, this time I'm working with the spray gun. This is an um, I don't know what it's called. A air spray gun shoots out bait. And it's quite different, you know, than uh, working with brushes, especially on the stucco wall. It helps out in the sense that um, that uh, <clears throat> that it covers good, but uh, it's just you got to get used to it, or at least I do. I have to get used to it. I'm not much of an airbrush artist, but uh, I have some respect for it, and I think it's a good thing in this case because we're working on such a large wall. Um, the only thing about the uh, airbrushes is that you got to keep changing these things out all the time, you know. It'd be cool if you knew which colors. It's, the thing about it is, is that you have to know exactly which colors. So it kind of takes the joy of creativity away. It's just all about feeling in. Um, that's about all I have to say. I'm still on the horses, and uh, this is uh, Selma, and there's a park right there. Sometimes we eat out there. Okay, there are the horses today. I mean, uh, the mules or the donkeys. Today, as you can see, I did a little bit of a whole bunch of things. Did a little bit of the groundwork underneath the uh, mules. And now I'm going out to uh, get some um, cigarettes. Try. And Francisco got a new, uh, uh, whatever you call those pressurized air tanks. 
Well, he's uh, fixing it up right now. Here I go. I get going. Where's out of your pot? Okay, here we are at the end of the day. Uh, it's, uh, what is it? What's today? Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday. That's right, Kentucky Fried Chicken Tuesdays. Something like a meal or something like that. Anyways, we worked uh, on the middle of the building, on the horses or the uh, mules, I'm sorry, the donkeys. And uh, we put a little bit of green over here in this background right here. Right now we're cleaning up and uh, I'll call it a day. All right, here we are at Broadway Studios. We just got out of work, you know. We got uh, Christian right here and Robert Amador right here and and uh, Francisco. We're all just kicking back, having a couple of beers at the end of the day. Um, you know, the sun's setting. You can see that. And uh, we're just having a good time and just trying to wind down from a heavy fucking hot-ass day.